What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Crypto Blitz, your home for your crypto fix. I'm your host, Ripple Van Winkle. Hopefully, everyone's having an amazing Saturday. Folks, opening week. Well, I guess last week was opening week for college football, but this is like where all the big teams are playing. It was just a select few games last week. I'm ready. I'm ready. I love Saturday football, Sunday football, Monday football, Thursday football. You name it, I'm all about it. There is nothing better in Southwest Florida during this time of the year. Get outside, get a nice cold bucket of beer, kick your feet up on the chair, put the games on, throw a couple of bucks just for fun on your favorite team or on who you think is going to win the game, and enjoy the day. That's what life's about. Enjoying the moment, folks. And we're all going to be able to do that sooner than later when crypto absolutely skyrockets and goes full on parabolic mode. I cannot wait for that. In this episode, we're going to talk a little Vila. We're going to talk about the market experts and what they're believing is going to have a beautiful October. We're going to look at some XRP advertisements going down in South Korea. We're going to hear a clip about gold. And then we're going to talk about CNBC and what they're saying about cryptos. Without further ado, let's jump into a Bitcoin. $59,264. It's currently up 0.08% in the past 24 hours. Ethereum coming in at 25.28. It's up 0.98%. USDT and USDC both coming in. At their dollar pegs, exactly where they want to be. And XRP coming in at a mean lean 57 or 56. It wants to be 57 cents. It's up 1.26% in the past 24 hours. I'll tell you right now, I bought a massive bag of XRP two days ago through my over-the-counter exchange. I settled the trade yesterday. And it's just a beautiful thing looking at that number. Keep on climbing up. Total cryptocurrency market cap, $2 trillion, $99 billion. Now, tomorrow, as you know, is the payouts for Lux Lions holders. It is your responsibility to make sure that you have signed over your NFTs. We have our own minting site, mint.luxlionsnft.com. You will need to look in one or two places. If you purchase an NFT, that appears under the shop NFTs page. And there's only really two collections unless you got a potion right now, the Warfare or the Olympic tier. You will need to go into the collection. This button right here will say free spins if you have an NFT that you need to spin for. You need to click free spins. You need to wait 30 seconds for a task button to appear in the upper right. Click on task and sign it over. If you did not get an NFT from that collection, you will need to come to account and then transfers and you will need to sign it over. If you do not sign your NFT over, you are not going to get credit for it. We take the snapshot right from here. This is the rich list, deluxe list, D-E-L-U-X list dot luxlinesnft.com. You can come on here. You can check your wallet with the amount of points and make sure that it adds up. If it does not, you better get to the Discord. You better shoot us a message because you had all month to do this and I do not want to hear that you did not get the correct payout tomorrow because you never signed over an NFT. The snapshot is based on this, folks. If you are not in the snapshot, we cannot go back because the, the XRP is distributed equally. You need to take responsibility here. 360 Trader put out his Velo chart. He's saying it's looking for that breakout. Velo. Been telling you about Velo since a cent. A little under a cent. This is what we call a 20X, folks. This thing is going to rip. This thing is going to moon. This thing is going to do something absolutely insane. Not financial advice. Please do your own research on Velo. How to buy it. How to hold it. Make sure you got the right contract because there are fake Velo contracts out there. Then CNBC reports that the crypto industry has raised... Almost half of all corporate money raised for the 2024 presidential election. Listen up. Now, a few years ago, former President Trump called Bitcoin a scam. But just last month, he spoke at the year's biggest Bitcoin conference and praised Bitcoin, comparing it to the steel industry a century ago. A great story on CNBC.com today about how Trump went from skeptic to believer. And joining us is the reporter behind the story, Mackenzie Segalos. Mac, welcome. <laughs> Hey, Tyler. So for months now, I've been talking to the people who have quietly been helping to orchestrate Donald Trump's total about face on crypto behind closed doors. The former president's 180 on digital tokens goes back to at least March. Now, that is when three Bitcoiners living in Puerto Rico got in touch with the Trump team and joined a chorus of voices, a group that includes Trump's family and friends, 
that has been actively pushing pro-crypto talking points. We're talking secret meetings at Trump Tower in Nashville and Mar-a-Lago, plus a slew of sideline fundraising events. Now, all in, they have promised him $100 million and 5 million votes. They've raised $25 million so far, and I'm told that an updated fundraising figure is coming my way soon. Now, Trump is listening, leaning into increasingly pro-Bitcoin talk on the campaign trail. People telling me that he's been learning, as experts have explained that the industry is real and not overrun with criminal activities. But there's also the matter of all that cash being raised and donated by crypto executives and businesses. In fact, almost half of all corporate money raised this cycle is from crypto. They're outspending big oil and banks. And so far, where the crypto cash is going in the primary races, wins have followed. We're talking a more than 85% win ratio so far when pro-crypto super PAC money is involved. So these are pro-crypto forces that are donating this money. They're not necessarily donating it in crypto. Well, some of them are, actually. Some of them are, but I'm sure. Bitcoin, Ether, USDC, more than $4 million worth of cryptocurrencies going to the Trump campaign. So these would be companies, these would be lobbying groups, uh, yes. prof professional organizations, etc. And it's especially the companies that are battling the SEC and Chair Gensler. Ripple and Coinbase are two of the biggest backers of, uh, of pro-crypto super PACs. Not necessarily the Trump campaign in particular, but certainly uh, Fair Shake is one of the biggest. You know, it's so much for we got one presidential runner and Trump who loves crypto. The other one says she loves crypto, but then she's trying to really crack down and enforce crypto. And yet half, half the money was raised was paid in crypto. We talked about this a little bit early this morning. I really want to touch on this. If this is a true announcement, a lot of people are going to be like, why hasn't the price reacted? Why didn't the price go up? Why aren't we at, you know, $100, $500 just yet, folks? It's, it's going to take time. Okay. Just because the lawsuit has come to an end does not mean that new money has entered the market. Just pay attention to the total cryptocurrency market cap here. What this lawsuit signifies for us XRP holders and for Ripple is two major things. A, Ripple can continue to run their business and operate in the U.S. The U.S. has probably the most money out of the whole world when it comes to institutional clients that will be able to work with Ripple and hopefully the end goal from the Holy Grail is to get them on to the XRP ledger and to buy XRP and to use on-demand liquidity or even the stablecoin, which would essentially use XRP in the back end because that's the gas token and the native token of the XRP ledger. B, it allows all the exchanges uh, to fully operate and do what they want with XRP, which will open the floodgates to ETFs, which will open the floodgates to institutional money, which I do believe is coming in 2025 to XRP, especially the ETF portion of this. And even see the wild card, you can start to get banks on board using and building out their own technology that is going to settle in XRP. That is what this is going to signify for us. That is the major development that is coming out of this. That is what we need to pay attention to everyone. Price should not jump here. If it does, it's going to come right back down. We will see a pullback. I'm not here for a 10% pump. I'm here for a 10 to 20X. And that's what we're going to get. Just a little bit of patience. A little bit of patience. I'm telling you. 2025, it's going to be a beautiful time for us. And here's, did everyone see this crypto ran about his Luna and how much money he lost? Just listen to this. He's on with for a RuPaul. We literally had so much money that we didn't know what to do with it. And we were making money like crazy. And then Luna. And when Luna collapsed, I had over 50% of my portfolio in Luna and Luna related projects. Okay, so you can imagine that I had over 50% of my portfolio in Luna and Luna related projects. On top of that, I genuinely at the time believed that Luna was going to change money. I had drank the Kool-Aid. And I'd broadcast to my community for months and months and months. And many of my community had followed me into Luna. And as you know, in four days, the whole trade unraveled. And I lost over $100 million. I lost $134 million. It was the toughest, the toughest. Cannot explain to you what it's like to lose that amount of money. Like, I just can't explain the feeling to you. Also, I was completely helpless completely helpless. Why? Because my Luna was staked. So there was no ways that I could have sold it. I couldn't have gone short because I couldn't, the, the, the volatility was too crazy. And the funding was, was absurd. My Luna got wiped out, but then the rest of my portfolio also got wiped out because, because Bitcoin dropped, all the altcoins went to shit. And I pretty much lost everything that I'd worked for the last five years to build. I pretty much lost it. 
it was it was dark. It was dark. And you know what the problem is? Not only did I feel dead inside, when I say I felt dead inside, I was alive. And I remember speaking to my kids, but not actually hearing what they said to me. I was alive, but I wasn't like, I was so distracted. And I remember looking at my wife and looking at my kids and going, you had everything and you fucked everything up. Like you had everything. You had all the money in the world. You, like you gave them, I could have given them anything. And in that time, we were in the middle of the carnage. Why were you taking more risk? If you'd had all... So this guy's a clown, Rand Nooner. Let's be honest. We know he's a scammer. He cl claims he lost $134 million. I don't believe him for one bit. He was behind so many pump and dumps and scams. That's how he made all of his money. If, I don't even believe that he lost $134 million, to be honest. I think he's trying to play that narrative so people kind of forgive him and feel bad for him. I don't feel bad for him one bit. People like that deserve to have absolutely nothing. Remember that. Now think about this. I showed this to you in the first video, but look at this right now. If we're looking at this, folks, what if Bitcoin does repeat a 2017 performance to get to that 2.272 Fibonacci level and we see a $465,000 Bitcoin? What if that does happen? Where is that going to take the price of all your favorite alts? I want you to think about that as you enjoy the rest of your Saturday night. Wash your damn hands. Be nice and be kind to each other. But then Winkle is out.